If you are nothing without the build figure pieces, then you don't deserve them. Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Sunday, you kissed my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! We are reviewing two figures from the Marvel Legends series, the Homecoming Build-A-Figure set, Marvel's Vulture and Spider-Man. If you haven't seen the movie yet, then what in the world are you waiting for? It's probably going to be out on DVD soon. So buy a copy, or wait for a friend to buy one and then mooch off of his. The boxes are standard Marvel Legends, with a clear panel on the front to reveal the figure inside, and any build-figure pieces that are included. Character art and the bios are shown off on the back. In this case it reads, A nefarious villain with his eyes set on ultimate technological dominance. Vulture suits up in an enhanced suit that makes him nearly unstoppable. Well, nearly. Also profiled are the other figures in this build-figure set that you will need in order to get all the flight gear for the Vulture. Also the homemade suit version of Spider-Man, with the same figures profiled on the back, and his much shorter bio reading, When Peter Parker discovers spider-like senses and wall-crawling abilities, he develops his own suit to become Spider-Man. Some spider-sense. Oh, did you see that coming? Anywho, let us take these figures out of their boxes and review them properly. And here are Spider-Man and Marvel's Vulture out of box. The Marvel's Legends class figures are more or less identical with their articulation. The main differences for each one lies in the sculpting. In this case, it is Spider-Man's homemade outfit, consisting of blue sweatshirt and pants, with a red vest and a red hood, and red booties. Whereas the Vulture mimics his movie online appearances in a sort of dark metallic green flight suit with gold trimming, and of course his signature bird beak helmet with glowing green eyes that don't really glow unless you shine an LED light on them. And even then it's kind of hit or miss. Vulture's flight suit has plenty of sculpted detailing, front and back, and is an excellent representation of his movie self. Ditto for the homemade outfit. The main detail on this lies in the, f in the simulation of cloth. It does a fairly decent job of disguising all the articulation joints, so you can squint and pretend that they're not there. I was hoping for a little more detailing on the eyepiece. For accessories, Vulture comes with this little stand, which is meant to go with his flight gear so that it acts as a brace for him to wear the flight gear, build a figure pieces, and not fall over with their weight. I'll be reviewing the build a figure wing parts separately. Spider-Man's homemade suit figure comes with a separate folded back hood accessory and an extra set of hands so that you may have both of his hands either balled up into fists or spread out for web slinging action. The colors and paint applications are fairly neat and tidy, except for some parts on these zippers and buckle sections, and on Spidey's fists, where the flesh sections poke out from the gloves. The paint there seems to be a little bit sloppier and has patches on it that don't look as neat. But the spider decal is very clean, and they even added little fake drawstrings to the sweatshirt. The wrinkles on the cloth section are fairly convincing. As with many Legends figures, there is sometimes a weakness to the elbow sections, which tend to fold outward a little bit. You can see that this elbow clamps neatly shut, whereas this one has a section that is poking outwards a little bit. Be careful when rotating these elbow sections, as the elbow joint may pop out completely. To swap out the fist accessories, Gently rotate them until they have loosened a little bit in their sockets. The plastic for the pegs and the wrists do tend to stick a little unless you rotate first to loosen them. But once they have loosened, you may gently rotate and pull the fist from its socket, and then push the other replacement hand into its place. How would you like a nice Hawaiian punch? Pua, 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 pua. 
to swap out the hood pieces, rotate and pop off Spider-Man's head. Ugh. You may then nudge the head out of the hood section in a manner similar to the Spider-Gwen figure. Then just drape the folded back hood section over Spidey's neck and pop the head straight back on. Both figures have the same level of legend's articulation with ball socketed heads that will rotate 360 degrees and tilt slightly backwards and forwards. The shoulders will rotate fully in their sockets and are also hinged to allow for a good amount of splaying. You will feel it when the plastic starts to budge up against itself and know when to stop. Upper bicep swivel is included. They have double hinged elbows. The hands will spin in their sockets and also come with a very tight hinge at the wrist, which will allow them to be folded in and out, depending on how much kibble is in the way. A mid-torso folding hinge is included, so you may arch their back slightly, or hunch them a little bit. Full waist swivel is included, and it feels like it's slightly ratcheted. Ball socketed hinges are included for kicks forwards and backwards, and the legs will splay in and out slightly. Upper thigh rotation is included, along with double jointed knees. The shins have a rotation joint, and the feet will tilt forward very slightly, tilt backwards to a fair degree, and also tilt on a ball socket. So all told, you can get a wide range of poses out of your figures, whether it be the Vulture or Spidey. It's a bit of a weakness that his feet won't tilt forwards a little bit more because that robs him of the ability to do some more of his iconic crouching poses. He's not easy to balance when doing wide angle stances because of the foot limitations that I explained. The Vulture suffers similarly on his feet because this little ridge here and the hinge cuff here interfere with each other, meaning that he can't tilt his feet forward very well. He, however, is able to lean his head backwards a little bit more, so if you can get him into a hunched pose, you can at least have him looking upwards. These hip flaps are thankfully softer plastic, so that he may splay his legs without bumping into them too much. For size comparison, here are Marvel's Vulture and Spider-Man homemade suit next to their spectacular Spider-Man counterparts. Here are Vulture and Homemade Suit Spidey next to the Hulkbuster Build-A-Figure armor set. And here is Marvel's Vulture with the Build-A-Figure Vulture Flight Pack assembled and attached. As you can see, the wingspan is massive and impressive. It is recommended that you clear a lot of shelf space for him if you intend to display him with the wings fully spread out. The vulture figure itself comes with this display stand which is handy in propping him up because otherwise you are reduced to trying to fiddle around with the wings and arrange them in such a way that he doesn't overbalance. It can be done but it's just easier when you use the stand. Insert the back portion of the wing pack into the stand, like so. It does not clip in, per se, it just tabs in very lightly and it will fall out with the lightest touch. It's cool that they used the figure to duplicate the little fur collar that the original Vulture had on his costume, and because, of course, you know, all vultures have that little fluff on their necks that looks like a fur collar. The helmet has this cool little beak built into it, and when the light hits it just right, you can see his eyes kind of glowing. The helmet has all these cool tubes and stuff attached to it, and it does rotate and nod so that he can look forward while he's flying. The vulture has a custom-shaped peg hole on his back, and a custom-shaped peg on the flight pack so that the two can join together. It would have been nice if they had used a standard peg hole so that you could attach the wings to other figures, but we'll take what we can get. The wings actually do have some articulation. These turbines are mounted on hinges that will rotate in and out to a fair degree. The rotors will both spin inside their little circles and also rotate. There's nice detailing on the flight pack in general. It's done over with greens and browns, and to simulate the glow of the jet propulsion, they 
painted a little blue on there as well. Protoss blue. We require more minerals. There is the main panel that joins to the vulture. The wings connect to those panels on a hinge. They will rotate 90 degrees both up and down for a total of 180 degrees. The secondary wing joint will fold almost all the way in, and also fold backwards fairly well. There's also a pivot here, and you can rotate the secondary wing joint 360 degrees. One complaint that I have is that all of the pieces are fairly flat. In the movie they seemed thicker and more robust, and I think the main complaint, if any can be made, is that the Build-A-Figure Vulture Wing flight pack is simply not identical in every way to how it appeared in the movie. In the movie there was quite a lot of articulation, the feathers were articulated, and the bending to the wings when the Vulture was in flight simply seemed a lot more dynamic and robust. Given the level of expense that you have to go through to get all of the Build-A-Figure pieces for this flight pack, it would have been nice if they had made the wing pieces a little bit thicker, and added some more articulation. You can still hunch the vulture forward on his torso joint, but it separates the back from the flight pack. The only way that they sort of join together and marry up is if the vulture has a straight spine. The main thing that this Build-A-Figure set has going for it is its massive wingspan. The wingspan is nearly as wide as Metroplex is tall. Nevertheless, the Build-A-Figure Vulture flight gear does look more detailed and is more articulated and of higher quality than any of the other figures that have been released for this movie line. I think it is not quite worth the price that you have to get to to order the pieces on eBay, and certainly not worth the price of collecting all seven of the figures. You could pay over $150. I give the Vulture Build-A-Figure flight gear Six out of ten deaths. <laughs> Buying one of the Marvel Legends figures almost always comes down to a matter of personal preference. Many people like the characters that are offered, others do not. Also a factor is whether or not you wish to assemble the build a figure associated with each wave. In this case, the only way to complete Marvel's Vulture is to buy all the figures in this set and get all of the flight gear pieces or hope that you can stumble across them on eBay for their hyperinflated prices. Curse you, eBay! In this case, fans of Spider-Man Homecoming will almost certainly want to collect these two figures. They may not like any of the other figures that are part of this wave, but these two, at least, they should pick up. Positive aspects include the Legends figure's strong articulation, excellent sculpted detailing, and decent playability. Negative aspects include some weakness in posing at the feet, some of the plastic at the joints isn't as strong as it could be, and some of the paint applications are a little bit sloppy. Nevertheless, Marvel's Vulture and Homemade Suit Spidey earn 7 out of 10 deaths. So take these broken wings and learn to fly again. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby, tell the boy, and tell me I'm your own.